So without further ado, it's my privilege to actually have a seat and turn the program over to Dr. Sheena Cable, who is the principal at Dave High School. And I should call Brian, who is the principal at Wintergreen Primary Intermediate. Dr. Brian actually went from Crickside Elementary to Wintergreen to get just started. And Wintergreen is actually two schools at once. So it's a big undertaking. Uh, and both of these folks are leaders that I trust. Both of these folks are leaders that I was working with. Both of these folks are in my daughter's state. I say go work if you want to kind of want grade level with them. So they're sharp in how they do things. So if you have questions, this is sort of I think they both they work some things out, I think they have some points to make. And if you have questions, just make sure we ask them to go through this. Take about 20 minutes or so to see how we can get out of that. So uh, so, welcome again. Thank you all very much for uh, having us today. Um, once again, my name is Sheena. I'm uh, principal at Aiden High School. Um, so, I want to first of all tell you that for, for me, the biggest thing is uh, for your CFPs and for your facilitating teachers, uh, the, the biggest thing is that you have to have the principal body in. Uh, for me, I was always at the COP. Uh, we began our COP years ago, of course, and that we did it, brought together our leadership team, and we looked at our data. And we, there were things that I knew I, I wanted them to do, but I had to get the leadership team to see what we really needed to do, but it came out even better than what I could ever anticipate. Um, so we had uh, three, two CFPs to begin with. Um, one of them was with um, English and social studies, and the other was with math and science. So we began the COP, one of them with the English was that we were trying to improve our reading comprehension skills and our critical level, critical thinking skills. We noticed that our English 2 scores were not as good as what we wanted. So that's why we decided to do the COP between social studies and with English. We also noticed that our ACT scores were not like exactly what we wanted. So we knew that we could build upon the critical thinking skills that we were doing within reading and um, within English and math, excuse me, English and social studies. So therefore, that's why we decided to do science and social, I mean, science and math together. And they also started building upon some writing rubrics within them um, as well within that CFP. Um, so the second year that we began with the CFPs, we could have write for an additional CFP. So that was my opportunity to do something that I've been wanting to do for a long, long time. And so um, I, I, 17 years ago, I was an administrator for Freshman Academy. I've never really been given an opportunity to do these freshman packages within the school. Uh, so we, our third implement, our third COP is a freshman academy. Uh, so we have these freshman academy, and then they uh, they they go on skinny throughout the whole school year. So that is what we do for them. Within our freshman academy, we noticed that of course our students, when they came to us, our reading comprehension skills that we had also said uh, with our COP were not where they needed to be. About an average of our students that come into us in the ninth grade or about a fifth grade reading level. And so what we did is we decided to have a multi-classroom teacher. With a multi-classroom teacher, they were working with the middle school that feeds to us and us. So the teacher actually went to the middle school and worked with the English and language arts teacher. And then she came over to the high school for the afternoon. So she worked with the middle school and high school. We noticed that that middle school that was feeding to us had a proficiency of about 12%. They were coming into us. So we knew that we needed to fix that. So that is what our multi-classroom teacher was doing and implementing a lot of things that we were doing in the high school in the middle school. So that was really good for us. Um, so there, that led to what we have now. Um, we, because of the multi-classroom teacher, freshman academies, we have a leadership class within that to really help build upon the reading comprehension skills. And so we um, no longer have the multi-classroom teacher, but we did this past school year, we're given the opportunity to have a reading specialist. And so high schools, not all high schools, have reading specialists if they choose to do so. And we do. Um, we did lose, use the multi-classroom teacher to help with that, uh, but now we have a reading specialist that is working with our freshman academy students. And like I said, the average grade level for our freshmen coming in is about fifth grade. And we do have some that are lower than that, but that's about an average right now for us. So I'm really excited that that's kind of um, spiraled because of what we're doing within our schools and um, because of the COPs. And I want to take that to somebody. I just want to also say that uh, because of the opportunities that we had, uh, to me, um, we were not doing a great job of PLCs. And so with our CFPs, we really were having some really good things happen. And so I knew that um, all of my, all of my um, 
PLCs need to be trained just like my COP. So what I began is that I asked um, Tom and Seth if they could come and train my uh, school improvement team. So my school improvement team, along with some other teacher leaders within the building, we began doing, we did situational leadership one summer. I didn't pay them. The only thing I did was feed them, and they came. Okay. I also did data-driven dialogues one another summer. And I've also done, I did I do adaptive schools as well for my school leadership team. And I, it wasn't just actually my school leadership team. I had others within each department, things that I asked them to come. And a lot of times what I will do when I do your end of the year PDP, I really am pushing you to do adaptive schools or data-driven dialogue, especially if you're leading a PLC. Uh, I really feel that our PLCs that have trained facilitators are doing such much a better job than some of our PLCs that don't. So I'm pushing those trainings for data-driven dialogue and adaptive schools for our building. Um, so over the last nine years, I've been in four schools. Um, and the point of me sharing that is it's difficult to come into a school, start an initiative, um, and see that follow through when you're really trying to focus on the school's data. So when I get in there and look at the school's data, um, and when we talk about the collaboration piece, it's super important for me to meet with my teacher leaders um, and collaborate on what they think a problem of practice should be within our school. Uh, ultimately, yeah, we know that we as school leaders have the final decision, but at the same time, it's difficult for me to make that decision when I went from one school to another school. So we have those conversations on what do we need to focus on. Another point of me sharing that was, you know, my, um, my background's elementary. Everything I've done has been elementary. My first principalship was in a middle school. So when we went to the middle school, one thing we noticed was our data was there. Um, we were exceeding growth and we were having wonderful scores, but part of the problem was we knew we could do better. We knew we could do better because of student apathy. Our students in the middle school, they were struggling with um, putting forth the effort. We weren't getting the home participation. So one thing we focused on as a community of practice was getting our parents to buy into the education of their students. We went ahead and had Patriot Pals. Part of that is having mentors, teacher mentors, who were familiar with the families. It was a small community school. So we wanted to make sure our teachers were active with students that they were familiar with, families that they were familiar with. Our guidance counselors started meeting with children who were not completing any of their work. What we noticed was when we put in extra time and effort with these kids, they're going to be successful. And that continued to help our scores rise. When we went to an element, when I went back down to elementary school, I'm after three years at the middle school, one thing we noticed was our reading scores weren't where they needed to be. Or where were, you know, when we, um, Dr. Feller said earlier, what was wrong with our reading scores? But we noticed it was vocabulary. Our students struggled with vocabulary. So we started in the younger grades with prefixes and suffixes, really trying to help students break words apart. When we started doing that, we started to notice that our scores aren't increasing. We got to third grade. And we realized, well, we really need to start putting in some intentional interventions with our students. This is where we're having some struggle. Speaking of the PLCs, when Dr. Feller mentioned earlier, we can have highly effective teachers in our building. I thought we had highly effective teachers. I still thought we had, I still think we had those. One thing we were lacking, though, was the PLC process. We struggled breaking down the data, the cycle of inquiry within our schools. Uh, third grade would be a perfect example. I had a teacher who did a phenomenal job. I went to a PLC. I watched her lead her team. I watched her break down the cycle of inquiry. She had uh, anger charts already created. They discussed what they were struggling with. And then later on that day, I went to another grade level PLC. And they were trying. They were putting forth all the effort they could. But at the same time, we were making little progress in conversations because there was no formal training in place. So when I, when I sat down with that third grade teacher, I wanted her to start sharing some stuff at staff meetings. Days, days are over with where we stand up as a school leader and just give them dates and information at a staff meeting. And I try to do professional development on our staff meetings. So I asked her if she would be willing to share things of the cycle of inquiry, how they break down data as a team. So her and her team did that. What we found was eye-opening was the training came right from our field office. It was training that was intentional. It was training that she had three or four different sessions, data-driven dialogue, adaptive schools. She was fully equipped to hold those conversations and fully equipped to train a small group of my staff members that we started to see better conversations taking place within different frameworks. So at the same time, we were looking to see how we could go ahead and push our teachers to become leaders within their group, um, rather than just have, sitting down having conversations and trying to make things work with the data. 
We also, for us, we had our COPs, they had to present to the school improvement team as part of their um, requirements for the um, grant. So that allowed us to not only, well, we wanted our school to see what's going on, but also I started doing other PLCs to present also that were not a part of COP, so they could see the process that was going on as well. Um, so that has been a, a great impact for us as well. Um, and so yeah, just lost my train. For this school year, um, our COPs is we're going, we're implementing an advanced honors um, academy this year. Um, so that we're really excited about that. We have freshman academy, we have Abbott, and now we're implementing an advanced honors academy. So we're really excited about that. Um, the Aiden Griffin High School is a small school. We only have 650 students. We're trying to make our students even more globally competitive. There are not very many, we have not had, I've been there for seven years, any student to receive a Moorhead or Clark scholarship. So we're trying to really push our students to be more competitive uh, with students within Pitt County. So that's why we decided um, to do the Advanced Honors Academy this school year. When, when we sat down, um, I sat down with Dr. Brown this summer, I think it was really more towards the end of last school year. Um, knowing that I was going to be going to a new school, what I wanted to focus on was a COP that was K-5, and I know that was a big undertaking. Um, when we started our COPs here in Penn County, we talked about keeping them a little smaller, but at the same time I shared with them I can be intentional with this, I can get buy-in with this, we just got to, you know, get the funding in place to make this work, and here's why I want to do this, because vertical alignment was huge. We needed to focus on vertical alignment. The other piece was, with the pandemic, we knew that our students, we had some students we haven't seen in about a year and a half. Um, they were doing the virtual academy, they were non-participants, some of them. So what we decided was, with our COP this year, we are going to focus in on students who need assistance in reading and math, but we're only focusing in right now on those students who were students who are non-participants, because we know that's where we're going to have to make the biggest gain for students. So it goes down to it again, just holding intentional conversations, um, being an ear to listen, letting our staff share why they want to do things and what they think the impact will be. And for me, that was important, rather than come in and say, here's what we are going to do. It's what do you think we can work on? What can we improve on? Why do you all think that? And then we come together and start that process. So let's do this. What questions might you have for these two individuals? How are your, I'm a middle school principal. How are your, how did you structure those COPs during the day? When were they scheduled? When did teachers meet? How much time did they have to meet? They, they weren't after school. We didn't, we didn't structure them during the day. Um, part of it, when they're getting the extra supplement, that was one thing that teachers were aware of. There's going to have to be some extra time put in. Um, so we went ahead and at the start of the school year, we went and got all the dates on, on the calendar. So nothing was, and when I say the dates on the calendar, it was our facilitating teacher getting with her uh, CTs, the community of practice together as a whole. And they came upon agreed dates, they put them on the calendar. And as Dr. Payton said, it's important for us as school leaders to be in there listening to the conversations, asking them questions, and then following through with things that they may need the most. So how long and how often did they meet? It was once or, once or twice a month. And they would have about an hour, hour and a half where they would meet. A lot of it was to start off looking at the processes in place on what they're really going to focus on, reading research-based uh, articles, seeing what works, what does not work. Do we think we can implement this? Are we able to implement this? It's kind of owning in on exactly what wants to, or what needs to be done and how they're going to do it. And then from there, it's the implementation. Now for us, we, um, our COP met twice a month for our English and our social studies. Um, our freshman academy, we all, we gave, we, they have common planning, so they met every week. But in school, we do it both some, some during the day, but a lot of, I think you had one that met early in the morning for right. high school schedule, but the high school starts later, so they hang out early. Oh, and we also had coaches that were C, um, C lab and CTs, and so we wanted you to accommodate everything. Other questions? We are big advocates of wait time, and you just noticed that right there. And all the advocates of not too much, right? Lee, any, any thoughts or questions you might have? Or we good? Yes, please. Yes, I'm just wondering with uh, we are in cohort one, I'm from Union County, I'm the director of curriculum and instruction. 
So co cohort one of letters. So not sure what cohort you all are in, but how do you see letters, which is a process, not a program, tying into COPs? Have you thought or had any conversation about that? You said letters? The letter, the elementary reading the training on the science of reading. Okay, now we do. All right. Um, so I, I would say from a district, do you, we're not, we're not up so we're, we're number two or three, I think. So I turn to my, my experts here. Um, any, are any of you guys? I think the whole district's in. We're, we're not doing that yet. Not there yet. Okay. We right. visited a school in Charlotte. We visited a school in Charlotte, and they said that ATR was really helping them with letters because of the, the distributed leadership. So uh, we'd be happy to connect with that. Okay. Uh, on, on that question, one of the things that was up there and hidden is this idea of self directedness. When it was Charlotte, Edcom, and myself, we were on, I think Ed and C did a special a webinar, and we talked about COVID. One of the coolest things is we don't have to micromanage how we address COVID. Our teacher leaders do. We had communities of practice that had to modify because they're no longer able to meet face to face. Even when our teachers came back late last year and we were not meeting face to face, they had to modify even how they did their, their community of practice. I see you miles already, right? <laughs> so the idea is this. We don't have to micromanage leaders. We build leaders and empower them to do the mic to do the changes and do the modifications and things. So that would be one, honestly, when you said it and it clicked, I'm like, there are gonna be some that how do we build that in? How do we address that? How do we implement this new program in and make it work? So thank you for that. I also want to say that from our teacher leadership institute that our teachers have attended, we've come up the teachers have come up with some great capstone projects. And that has allowed me as a leader to not have to have so much stress on myself. They have gone and they have implemented some really great things at our school as part of their project that they had to do from the Teacher Leader Institute. And it's better ideas than I could ever come up with. So that's been a really big thing for us too, is really pushing those leaders to do some of those casting projects within the schools. So as we train the, the TLI participants and they do the training, the end is they have to do something. So lead, take advantage of an opportunity. Um, and I know, Terry, you were part of this. You were in TLI. Were any of y'all the TL? You, you, okay, so Nicola. So we have some participants, uh, whether it's TPT or TLI. So when you get a chance to meet with um, the teachers in a moment, ask them questions. Uh, some of them were, some of them were. And it's, it's what's unique is, and you'll pick up on their accents in a little bit. So whether you find a teacher from the Caribbean, or you find a teacher from Pennsylvania, or a teacher locally here, we have all kinds of teachers here. And that's what's cool. It's open to everybody who's affected, everybody who's there. And what's cool is just being able to talk to them. I just want to reiterate, you cannot make a principal do this. They have got to have buy-in, and that's the whole key to everything. They have got to have the buy-in. They have got to know what's going on. Um, so much so for us, and I'm pretty sure for you, that our COPs are part of our school improvement plan. This is what we're doing. Our whole school knows about it. Um, so you have to, that's a really big thing. When I, when I was sitting on some evaluation teams, and you could tell where the COPs were stronger was where the principals were there, and they knew exactly what was going on. Which goes back to allowing them time at your meetings present to the staff what they're working on, the progress they're making. So every FT presents to the staff, sometimes a small group, sometimes the entire staff, and that's key. And some actually, because they're multi-school, are presenting to multiple staffs. And so we have some of those as well. So that's key. So making sure that the word gets out. So it's not secretive money we're paying our favorite people. It's they're earning this money. And that's what's really cool is they are earning this money and it's so cool. So what is your process for choosing those facilitating teachers? So for us, it was an application process. Um, we knew what our, uh, our school improvement team, our leadership team decided on what we wanted to focus on. Uh, so we knew that we had a few teachers in our building that had the EVOS scores um, that, were, that and would apply to that. And so that's how it, it they do it and then the application goes to the deal office. We have, I think it's six criteria. Correct. Student achievement is one non negotiable. So, facilitating teachers have to be positive green or blue, multi classroom teachers have to be blue. Um, or you can be in the top 25%. So, we figured if the state pays you, that's good enough to save college. Um, the other thing then is um, we have 
Um, pedagogy is one idea. What are some areas of expertise in pedagogy and content and leadership? Uh, so there's different things, different trainings you can do to get the points. Part of that was from the Fed, federal government, so that's because we couldn't just say test scores. Uh, evaluation can play a role, so if you're distinguished in one of the categories, and for Pitt County, getting distinguished in a standard at the end of the year is a difficult rating. We looked at that, and so that's one that we recognize as well. Um, so there's, there's, it's, it's on our website. If you email me, I can get you what's the criteria so you can look at. It. We follow those six criteria, um, which we some people out, and then we had an interview committee sit down. Um, some of our leadership teams and interviewed individuals who wanted to do that piece, make decisions that way. That's key. So they, they agree to work together, right? I was just going to say, we can send out some follow up information about Pitt County's model and have some examples of that criteria from other districts as well. So we can share. So, without further ado, we're going to pause this. So, thank you very much. Round of applause. How about for